Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the first, well the second mukbang, mukbang video that I've ever filmed and I thought it would be interesting to film another one. It is kind of late but it's fine. I can still have dinner at this time, it's okay. Um, I got some boneless buffalo chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings and I have my dipping sauces right here. Buffalo Wild Wings bag. I got my ranch. I got my blue cheese. I got some salt and vinegar. And then, oh, they gave me a lot of ketchup. I don't know why. Oh, where are my little wet wipes? There we go. I got my wet wipes. Ooh, everything's all sticky. Gross. Okay, I'm going to need my wet wipes. I know it. All right, and I have my, my wings. Sorry if you guys can't really see this. This setup is still kind of new to me. I've been watching a lot of mukbangers, mukbang people. Mukbang. I'll say it right one day. And I like to watch Choice TV, especially eat and give commentary. So I thought it would be kind of cool to do that type of video. Again, sorry if you can't see the food. Let me see if I can adjust the camera. I tried. I failed. I think I just need a higher table. Anyways. I thought it'd be cool to do a reaction video, so I'm actually going to pull the video up right now that I will be reacting to. This is my first time watching it, so we'll be watching it for the first time together. So, my first time watching this video, we're going to react to it together. This is um, Naya Reads and Smiles video that she did, Being Black on Booktube. Let's see. Ooh, don't you just love the ads? Love it. Being black on booktube, a discussion, my experience. So I believe there was an article that came out that was actually originally written in 2017 about this situation. And they interviewed Naya from Naya Reads and Smiles, India from Big Hair, Books and Big Hair. Uh, who else was interviewed? Christina Marie, I think, from her channel, the same name, and I'm missing somebody. Article was written years ago, and apparently it just recently came out. The Book Archer. Yes. What is her name from The Book Archer? It's going to bug me. But yes. So, yeah. So then she made this video, and you guys know that we've been having this discussion here on my... This discussion about being black on BookTube here on my channel for a while now. I mean, so I had to watch this. And everyone's been telling me to watch it, like all of my booktube friends. And I just haven't had the chance. And I thought I would film a reaction video. I'd be watching it. So here we go. Let's start the video. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a different video. It is currently 6 p.m. at night, and I was going to wait until the morning to film this. It's been a while since I watched one of her videos. But I have had this rush of courage. <laughs> I've been wanting to film this video for a very long time. Really? I've just been, to be completely honest, um, terrified. <laughs> so mm. I'm sure you've read from the title. Today I'm going to be speaking about my personal experience being a black booktuber, being a booktuber of color in this community. Despite how much I read, I don't know why, but I always get really nervous when talking about my own personal experiences and I always kind of get... Poor thing, she's so nervous. Like I can't articulate. She's literally so nervous, you guys. I feel kind of bad for her. Oh my god, it's gonna be okay, girl what I want to say or that I'll say something but it'll come out wrong or people will misinterpret me and so I end up just getting nervous and then not saying anything but recently there has been an article that has come out and I have been talking to other booktubers and they have given me the courage thank you Christina Marie if you're watching this she in particular really um, was a person that pushed me and is the reason why I'm sitting here filming this video and not freaking out and like stuttering recently Jolie does okay my initial thoughts she is really freaking out. I feel really bad for her. And I find it interesting that she says that Christina Marie gave her the courage to finally come out 
I'll make this video. So shout out to Christina Marie for encouraging her and like, you know, being in her corner. But this is a conversation that we've been having here on booktube for a while. So my, a part of me can't help but wonder, even though the article was originally like initiated in 2017, when I guess the conversation really started getting going, a part of me can't help but wonder, like along with Christina Marie, if the article coming out didn't also give her the courage. Because that's like a legitimate media source and publication kind of co-signing your feelings and your thoughts and your experience. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So people can't just say she's whining or she's complaining. You now have like a credible professional source, a journalist, kind of like validating you. Anyways, let's continue. Over oh my god, 26 Post minutes. An article called Where Are All the Black Booktubers? I was so lucky to have been interviewed for this article. I was actually interviewed way back in 2017. Um, and I was so scared that somehow HuffPost kind of smothered the article or kind of brushed it under the rug um, because I never saw it published. So I was super surprised when I woke up and I checked Twitter and the article was up and everyone was talking about it. Dolly also interviewed three other black booktubers, India from Books and Big Hair. Hi, India. I love her channel. She's one of the first people I subscribe to. Christina Marie, as well as Kashaw Archer from The Book Archer. Kashan. I a link to the article as well. So I don't. I have not read the article. And you guys, I don't know if she says it in this video. Oh no, it's drowning in wrench. I don't know if she says it in this video, but like, what made them, the writer of the article, wait two years to put it out? It's weird. Don't y'all think that's weird? Let's continue well as all the booktubers I mentioned, as well as Jolie's information down below so you guys can check them all out, check the article out. Please, if you haven't already, um, check out the article, read it, and then come back and finish watching this video because I'll be discussing a lot of the topics that were brought up in the article. Okay, so the goal of this video, before I get into everything, is not to start an argument, but rather to continue a discussion that has been going on for a long time. Why does there seem to be no black booktubers? Um, which there are, there are hundreds of so us. So but the main problem is, and the main thing that I think all of us booktubers that were interviewed in the article brought up, black booktubers aren't getting exposure. A lot of people don't know that I've been on booktube for quite a while. I started my channel in 2014. First time I'd just like to say, Naya and I started our channels around the same time. And I remember seeing her. I remember subscribing to her channel. And I remember like watching her channel explode and grow rather quickly in comparison to like say my channel. And I remember thinking like it's because it was it was because of her infectious personality. Like she was just like such a ray of light and a br a breath of fresh air. And in a weird way, I never equated her experience on BookTube to my BookTube. To my experience on booktube so i'm glad that she's telling her story because i just never equated the two of our experiences um okay I'll, I'll speak more on that later let's let's keep going let's keep going let's keep going i tell them that they're like what do you mean i just found your channel like a year ago yeah <laughs> i've been i've been here i've um yeah my channel has been around i've been on booktube for five years and it has taken me the full five years um to get where i am and i am so grateful so um blessed to have been connected with all of you guys the biggest things that everybody in the article pointed out was that black booktubers aren't getting opportunities and i've been asked previously why i personally feel like my channel has been successful and i've never really been able to give an answer because i feel like when it comes to the success of a youtube 
YouTube channel. Um, that is a tree with a lot of roots. I think a lot of factors play into why certain channels are more popular than others. But I absolutely believe that race is one of the big factors. I think you can just, again, look at the community and see that there is a huge gap between successful black booktubers and successful white booktubers. In order to... I'm so glad she said that and she's not beating around the bush. I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by this by this video. I didn't think she was going to be as forthright as she's being. And I commend her because she is the biggest quote unquote black booktuber. Technically she's biracial, but she is part of the black community and she does have a black experience. It's not like mine, which is what I was alluding to before. Like I never equated our experiences to be the same. Again, that's why I'm so glad she made this video. But I will say that it is very commendable that she is being so honest because she is the biggest black booktuber on this platform in terms of subscribers, in terms of like, I'm sure the AdSense money is great in terms of exposure and opportunities that she gets. She is kind of like her and Christina Marie, although Christina Marie is nowhere near her and subscribers. They are like the ones that people choose, that the publishers choose, the public chooses, especially her, because out of all of us, she has the most subscribers. Last I checked, I think it was at over 50,000. And so I can definitely understand her reticence on speaking on this topic because she is now a brand. You know, she's now making money off of this. This is, you know, kind of a career for her at this point. And I'm sure she doesn't want to alienate any of the publishers or, you know, anything like that. She doesn't want to piss anyone off. And if this is her bread and butter, I'm not sure. I don't know too much about Naya. Then she certainly doesn't want to lose out on her livelihood by speaking out. So, okay, let's continue. Ah. Try and answer that question again. Mm. With Salt and vinegar is I looked at my own experiences and what has helped my channel grow. And reading the article and reflecting back and really analyzing my youtube career i don't want to say career because this has been this is a hobby for me and it's oh, been okay. a life-changing hobby for me the biggest thing that has i guess led to the um success i've experienced thus far with my channel is opportunity the opportunities that i've been given the people i've been allowed to work with the events i have been invited to to speak at all of these yes why have you naya gotten those opportunities over other black booktubers do numbers have something to do with it absolutely but i mean i'm not going to take anything away from her hard work and you know her infectious personality and how much people enjoy watching her videos but i can't help but think i'm just gonna come out and say it colorism i am i'm so sorry i'm sorry if i'm offending anyone but she is kind of the safer POC choice. Let's continue. Thing, biggest reasons why my channel has been successful. And if you look at other black booktubers, the main thing that they aren't being given is opportunity. If you look at things like booktube panels, sponsorship videos, getting to work with publishing companies, getting to fly and do events, all of these things for me personally have like led to exponential growth with my channel and if you look at who gets chosen for these opportunities the most it's white booktubers it is the ratio or those closest of to whiteness booktubers of color that are getting picked for panels and getting you know picked for sponsorships opportunities or the palatable pocs colorism and getting sent arcs and there's no opportunities being given to black booktubers and to booktubers of color i know one of the arguments on the other side is that you know black booktubers and booktubers of color just don't have the same numbers and that's the reason why they aren't getting opportunities that's an excuse <laughs> like hallelujah so glad she said it that is an excuse because there are white booktubers that n don't necessarily have the numbers in the sense that they're not huge and they're still being given opportunities and they're given opportunity to grow, right? That's the whole point. That is the 
as an excuse. I personally was given opportunities when my numbers were just not even a fraction of... I wonder why. ...some other booktubers that I was with um, for these opportunities. From a business perspective, you know, smaller businesses that are reaching out, um, smaller publishing companies that are reaching out to booktubers, I understand how numbers can be more important. But as far as bigger opportunities with people that do not need numbers, okay, we're just going to call it out. We're going to talk about the Michelle Obama interviews. For anyone who's read the article and... Oh, she's going there. YouTube, ...you know that YouTube recently did a, is it a feature series or like an... Oh, wow. She's really taking it there. I did not expect this. I feel like I'm gonna run out of room on this memory card, so forgive me if I have to stop and restart. Interview series where they basically brought on three booktubers to interview Michelle Obama. I'm gonna start by saying that I am so happy for the booktubers that got to meet her. And Always have to have the disclaimer because people get butt hurt. Anyways, just want to let you guys know what I'm drinking. This is the mandarin orange flavored sparkling water beverage with other natural natural flavors from I got this at Walmart y'all I love it yes I know it's not healthy it's not good for me it's fine I don't care to interview her I think that was a huge win just for the booktube community as a whole. I think whenever anybody, any company um, Disclaimer. on YouTube recognizes booktube, it's, it's a huge thing because we're a really small community and it doesn't happen very often. And this was one of those Ooh. one of those opportunities where it really put a spot on slow down. YouTube as a whole. Those interviews came out. A lot of people were tagging me and DMing me and messaging me, um, asking if I was upset that I wasn't invited or what my thoughts were. Huh. Girl. Girl. I just remember that whole situation. And you guys may not know this, but there was a little drama on Instagram regarding this. Because Julesy, who is a YouTuber, I actually really enjoy her videos here. She makes commentary. And she actually lives not too far from me in Charlotte. Julesy, if you're watching. Hey girl, probably not, but you never know. She was the one who interviewed Michelle Obama. And I remember Brittany and Troy and I were talking about this in our group chat, and we may or may not have mentioned it in one of our lives. But we're like, it's fake outrage, it's fake news. Like, okay, so a booktuber, a specific booktuber, did not interview Michelle Obama, but a black woman who makes amazing commentary on YouTube interviewed Michelle Obama and she does speak about books from time to time. No, she's not a booktuber in the sense that she only makes videos about books. We thought it was fake news, fake outrage. Like, I mean, I was happy for Julesy to get the opportunity. I really enjoy her videos. But back to the drama on Instagram. So apparently India, who I adore from Books and Big Hair, posted about this article on her Instagram and was like, hey, you know, and she mentioned the whole Michelle Obama situation and Julesy actually was in the comments <laughs> and took offense and was just kind of like, what about me? It doesn't make me part of the book community. I don't shade the hard work that I do type of thing. And India was just like, girl, I'm just talking about the fact that nobody from our actual specific community, booktube, no black booktuber, like you make videos about books only was chosen and I can't help but see like India's side on this and I can't help but see both sides like I'm happy for Julesy I think it's great that she had that opportunity am I even saying her name right <sighs> y'all this this video is a mess <sighs> but it's the same token I see where India's coming from as well Yes, you, you feel me? Weird tangent. I just want to give you all the tea. Let's continue. That they chose three white booktubers. I'm so grateful for the opportunities I've been given. And when I see other people getting opportunities, I never think, oh, I wish that was me. I'm, I'm always just very happy for those people. And I was afraid if I spoke Same. out about it that I would be jealous, bitter, jealous, 
or hateful, which is not my intention at all. Isn't it sad that as POC, we always have to tiptoe around that line, right? When we are, we see injustice or we see inaccuracies and inequalities, we have to be so careful about how we position ourselves in order to speak out. And oftentimes we're silenced because we don't want to be seen as combative. The angry black girl, the angry black woman, bitter, jealous, pulling the race card. Can I continue? It's so sad, you guys, that even in our like fight, in our opposition against the things that are literally holding us down, we can't even be free to speak up. I couldn't help <laughs> but feel is a little hitting. heartbroken when I saw those interviews because I felt like it was a huge missed opportunity for the Black Booktube community. Michelle Obama is a very notable figure. She's a boss, okay? Let's just, let's just leave it at that. She is a boss. Does anyone just think about that Fifth Harmony song? Because I did. She has done Michelle Obama, even Michelle before she Obama. became the first lady. Mm -mm -mm. She dedicated mm -mm -mm. her Make whole it. Oh, life right, People, to helping her community, to helping the black community. Her book, Becoming, which is what well, they were promoting in those interviews. I fail as a mukbanger because I'm already full. How do y'all eat like this? I'm full. I don't want to eat no more. It was, um, was, it was an incredible book. I listened to the audiobook. I cried multiple times because I was just able to relate it was so, good. so deeply to her experiences. I feel like a lot of other black women, a lot of other black booktubers were able to connect with it. Amen. This video is really, really long. We're only eight minutes in. I've been recording for 22 minutes and 47 seconds, so what am I going to do? Whew. way that you really only can connect with it if you're a black woman. The argument was Facts. that, you know, they just chose people who had really high numbers. But the thing that I couldn't accept with that was Michelle Obama doesn't need the numbers. It was Michelle Obama being interviewed. It was this incredibly strong black woman. She brings up an excellent point. You know, that's always the excuse, like, oh, you know, we have to pick someone that has a lot of subscribers, da 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 I'm sorry, if anyone does an interview with Michelle Obama, they're gonna get views because it's Michelle Obama. Like, and it probably would give them a great exposure. It probably would give them an opportunity to really grow their platform. Good point. Good point, Naya. Well, man, I, like, I, I don't know why whoever was in charge of you know, choosing the people for that opportunity. Why they didn't invite another three booktubers who were black, who were women. Um, something that India said from Books and Big Hair um, in a Twitter thread was that it's not about subtracting and replacing white booktubers. That's not at all what this discussion is about. It's making sure that if you're someone in charge of putting on a panel or inviting people to do an interview or, you know, giving any sort of exposure to anybody in the booktube community, anyone in the YouTube community, it's about making sure if there are three white booktubers there, that there are also three booktubers of color. You know, it's about... See, that is really what it is about. And I'm so glad that India said it so well. It is about representation and not tokenism. It is about equal representation, right? Like, if you're gonna have X amount of Caucasian booktubers, YouTubers, creators, influencers, whatever, make sure that you have an equal amount of people of color. I don't even care if it's not all black people because there are other POCs out there that need to be represented as well. You need to mix it up and you need to make sure that it, it's equal. It's equal. It's not just a token like, oh, the token black woman. And she's probably biracial because that's more pal palatable to us. You know, God forbid we put a dark skinned black woman in there. No, too dangerous. We'll put in a biracial or a racially ambiguous girl who is closer to whiteness. Uh -huh. Let's put in our token Asian. Which Asian country doesn't matter. Let's get one, you know, lighter skinned, more Eurocentric features. 
yeah, make everyone comfortable. Am I not speaking facts? Let's put in um, our Latina, but you know, not our Afro Latina. Let's put in our white Latina. And yeah, okay, let's keep going. Like, it's just like, ah! <laughs> don't do that. Oh, gotta stop doing that. It's, it's just, we see through it and it's just, it's not okay. It needs to be equal representation across the board. Oh my gosh, 17 minutes left. This video is gonna be so long. If you guys make it through this whole entire video, kudos for you. Also, I would like to say, please thumbs up this video. Y'all be watching, but y'all don't be thumbs up in. So please thumbs up this video. Like, like, like. Oh, thumbs up. Old school YouTube. Please like this video. <laughs> it's too late for me to be filming. Please like this video and comment and subscribe and hit the notifications bell because a lot of you guys are missing out on my videos. It's a lit over here on Oshi Reads lately. It's pretty lit. Oh great, now my internet connection is slow. Life is good. Sure to go. include everyone and to make an effort to include everyone. Now, if I was the person in charge of choosing the people to do the interview, my first instinct would have been- Ooh. I would just like to say because people are gonna get mad. It doesn't mean that I don't feel that biracial people and there is more but there are more biracial or mixed people than just black and white let's put that out there but I'm not saying that biracial people don't need their representation as well they do that's my whole point like don't try to substitute like a white per or a black person for a biracial person or an Asian person for someone who's half white like don't do that like they need their own representation as well just had to put that side note in because y'all see me all crazy. You know, this is a black woman. Let's bring black women onto this show because one, they're probably going to be the people that are going to relate the most, the people that have been able to take the most from her book becoming. Two, because Michelle Obama's whole philosophy and whole life has been dedicated to giving opportunities to people in the black community. So it would only make sense to perpetuate that. I kind of want to now pivot to the title of this video, which is my own personal experience being black. Finally. Um, I have been lucky enough to get incredible opportunities. 15 minutes. That to this day, Left. I'm still convincing myself that I deserve, which is something I think a lot of people of color just experience. You deserve it, Naya. Is having to convince themselves that they deserve the opportunities that they're given. I want to talk about. I know I deserve my opportunities. I work damn hard for my opportunities. Just saying. My experience on booktube, just to further solidify the point of opportunity being the biggest factor that can help elevate booktubers of color. I get nervous when I talk about myself, but um, okay. I oh, took notes. I just want to hug her. I it's okay, girl. To make sure We're that here. I had my timeline correct and that I um, We're here for you. touched on everything I wanted to touch on. I started my channel in 2014 november oh my 2014, god I my first baby video. naya look at her hair video it is still up on my channel um you can watch it but maybe don't watch it i was 15 um i'm currently 20 now so just be aware of the age difference if you do go back and watch the video oh. when i started my booktube channel not I lady like was 15 years old and i hashtag owned, relatable I think eight or nine books. I'm gonna put pictures up for reference so you guys can see. Because I didn't own a lot of books, I felt a bit embarrassed, which is... You know what? This is something I talk about a lot on my channel. Like, we gotta stop being ashamed of not owning books. Or, like, if you're watching this and you've wanted to start a book... If you're watching this and you've wanted to start a booktube channel for a long time, don't let not owning a lot of books stop you. From that. Okay. The library is free. That I know a lot of new booktubers experience because you know they see, well, <laughs> they see this in the background of my videos now, and they think that this is what you need to be successful when 
it's not on stead, I would film in front of this white wall. I remember that. Video. My first few videos were filmed in front of a white wall. I remember that. The majority of the books I read, I borrowed from when the I library, that and I was also an avid reader of Wattpad stories, kind of known as a fan fiction site, which I think I did read a bit of fan fiction, but I read a lot of self-published stories by other teenagers. Um, you could publish chapter by chapter on Wattpad, and it was a way to read for free because I couldn't afford books. I was living with my dad, who was a single parent working three jobs. You know, I like this because I don't really know that much about Naya, so this is nice. Jobs and taking care of three kids, and we, we couldn't afford books. I love my dad, he has always supported my love for reading, but at the time, you know, he couldn't just give me 10 or 20 dollars to go and buy a book, so I borrowed a lot of books from the library. After I turned 16, which was just a few months after I started my channel, I got two jobs. I worked at an art gallery, and my man got two jobs. <laughs> Shout out to Everybody Hates Chris. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. And at a retail store, I blew up balloons. I worked at a party store. I got two jobs and the majority of my money went to help support my family, but the extra money I was able to make every month, I was able to buy books now. I didn't know about any of like, the discount bookstores online, so I was paying full price for every book. So that's- Oh no, baby. What is you doing? Not full price. Ooh, that hurts my soul where my collection kind of started. I did my schooling online, which is how I was able to have two jobs. I would work during the day and then come home at night and then do my schoolwork until like three in the morning. At wow. the time, my whole life was just work. Um, I didn't have uh, any friends. Um, oh my God, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> because I was working all the time, I would just read books on my free time, on my lunch break, and that was where I escaped into to find comfort, you know? So when I discovered BookTube, it was and still is the biggest blessing in my life because suddenly I had this community, you know, I was really new. Oh, wow. I did not know that about her. See, you never know someone's story. You never know what someone has gone through to get to where they are. That's why I'm never somebody that's going to begrudge somebody their success or their blessings or what they've been given. I think, like, a lot of it is what they've earned and what they've worked hard for as well. But there are blessings that come to us from God or, you know, whatever you believe in. And you can't begrudge people that because you just don't know their story. You don't know what they've been through, what they've gone through to get to where they are. Okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But so welcoming and I had this place where I could express um, my creativity and interact with other people who actually had the same interest as me which it was the first time in my life where I was able to talk to like 10 people who all loved books and who had all read um, Throne of Glass or whatever book I was reading at the time and booktube gave me something that I this is why I love this community so much we have all come to this community for our own various reasons, but the level of enrichment and betterment of our lives that we get from being a part of BookTube is truly something special that I don't really see on any other sector of YouTube. We're kind of awesome. <laughs> I never knew I desperately needed, and that is this overwhelming sense of belonging somewhere and having... <laughs> Like having a, having my people, you know, I had like a, a group, you know, I had I had friends, which I know, you know, it was like online, but still it was, it was, um, oh God, it was amazing. It was such a blessing and it still is such a blessing. Those first two years on BookTube, my channel was pretty small. I had a small channel, but I didn't care. I still don't care. I just was happy I had like four people. I remember that. I remember when she first started. She stayed pretty small for a while and then she just exploded seemingly overnight. Obviously it's not overnight. There's no such thing as overnight success, but I just remember like, cause like I said, we started our channels. All right, y'all, my camera died. I'm sorry, or it didn't die, it overheated. Story of my life. So I'm gonna continue on. The mukbang portion of this video is, is over. I don't even remember what I was saying. 
but let's just keep going. Um, to talk to, 10 people to talk to about books, and you know, I was doing a lot of tag videos, and it was just really fun, you know? I think I was talking about how I remembered her channel, and how it just started growing exponentially, because we did start at the same time, so I kind of was like kind of watching her growth, and then like watching my non-growth. <laughs> reach out to me and to give me an opportunity that exposed my channel to thousands of people that literally within six months had my channel going from I think it was like 5,000 subscribers to maybe 10,000. Wow. That company was Book Outlet. Um, I still That's work with them today. Right. And I remember that. They made her like a partner and they had her on the website. That would be an amazing opportunity. Are you kidding me? They are. They were the first company that took a chance on me. They reached out to me and they were like, hey, you know, um, we saw your video. We thought it's really cool. We're starting this new thing called a vlogger page where they're having a vlogger page on their website featuring a bunch of different booktubers. Book Outlet gave me a gift card to buy books from their website. And people that frequent the website can then go to the vlogger pages and see what different book reviewers are that is amazing. I knew they got something out of it. I wasn't sure, but it makes sense. Like they are basically getting exposure out of it. Reading. So as you can imagine, I was freaking out. I at the time was the I'm pretty sure the smallest booktuber that they reached out to. Like I said, I had maybe like 5,000 subscribers and they were reaching out to booktubers that had over a hundred thousand. So at the time I was like, why is Book Outlet emailing me? Like I am not a big creator. I I you know, I don't have a, the numbers, but the marketing team that worked at Book Outlet made an effort to make sure that the vloggers on their vlogger page were diverse and that that page had color on it within like <laughs> like three or four months. I'll have to go check that out and and see because whenever I go on book outlet I see that page but I don't really pay attention to it of course I notice the booktubers who are on that page because I watch booktube and a lot of them are the popular booktubers including Naya but I haven't really paid attention to that like how diverse it, it is I was getting hundreds of people coming from the book outlet website saying hey I, I saw your vlogger page and I watched your video I'm back so happy I found you just felt lucky to have more people to connect with and to get to work with a company that was supporting me like genuinely was supporting me and the gift cards that they were giving me helped me buy books because like I said at the time I really couldn't afford books and so the fact that they were giving me a book card, or not, not a book card, um, a gift card on top of that to support my channel. It was huge. It allowed me to get more books that I could read and then review, and it just continued to help the growth of my channel. Was it 2015 or 2016? I think it was 2016. I was invited to speak on a booktube panel at the North Texas Teen Book Festival. I paid for my travel down there. I was based, I was here. That is amazing. So it's like, that one company taking a chance on her really opened the doors for her to have all of these other amazing opportunities and it kind of just snowballed from there and her growth just kind of exploded from there. That's all it takes and that's what it makes it so frustrating like as a part of the black booktube community and the booktube community at large to see how we are not allowed into these spaces and not giving these opportunities and it's like that's all it takes is that one opportunity and that one company taking a chance on you that one time to give you a larger exposure and a larger platform and that's literally all it takes so frustrating it's like so close and yet so far <sighs> in Denver at the time and it was the first time I ever got invited to go to a book event not only go to the event but to speak to an audience of people again my channel my numbers were so small wow. in comparison to the other booktubers on the panel I know Jesse was there one mm -hmm. year either the first year or the second year and yeah and I just remember thinking why am I here like my you know my numbers don't even match up but again it was the people in charge of the event that made an effort to make sure that there was color on their panel again my channel grew tremendously I was able to meet hundreds of see this is so interesting because she's kind of exposing like the formula in the sense of like 
this is all it takes and the issue now is why is it so hard for these companies to reach out to other booktubers of color and I'm not just talking about just black booktubers I, I speak for black booktubers because I'm black but why is it so hard to reach out to other POCs they reached out to Naya and it's been great for her but why is it so hard for them to reach out to others it's almost like like I understand that she's kind of praising these companies for taking a chance on her and you know making sure that they had color on their panel but Naya you're one of the only people that they've reached out to you you know it's it's not enough and so is it like they feel that they've reached a quota and they're everything's good now and they don't need to keep reaching out to more you know I have questions questions readers and I made little business cards and was handing them out to people She's so I was cute. able to network and connect with people in the publishing industry um people who worked with Scholastic and just Harper Teen and just everyone I was able to to just network the biggest thing that came out of this opportunity that then led to me getting another huge opportunity was I actually met Margo from Epic Reads or she's not with Epic Reads anymore but um she used to be with Epic Reads I have been following Epic Reads since like 2013 when they were doing their tea time videos on their YouTube those. channel Epic Reads is an imprint as well as Epic Reads has come a long way as um, a blog site that's connected with Harper Teen or Harper Collins Publishing. But anyways, I met Margo from Epic Reads and she, you know, I told her about my channel and a month after that event, she emailed me asking if I wanted to do a series for the Epic Reads YouTube channel, which was like- You see what I mean, you guys? You see what I mean. She's literally telling us all what it takes and what happens you need that you need the opportunities because you don't know what will come from the opportunities and like the snowball effect in a good way that that will have <sighs> this is so frustrating to listen to like i'm so happy for her and i like love to hear her story but this is like getting me kind of upset it was huge again i was a really small channel margo didn't care she's like you know i love your videos um and i would love if you would do a series with us for the epic reach channel which had over a hundred thousand subscribers so when i did end up doing those videos for the epic reach channel i was one freaking out because like i said again i was a huge fan of the tea time videos so the fact that i was like even working with margo um margo wood from epic reads was insane and i was so grateful and i was trying not to fangirl when i was talking <laughs> to her thousands of people found my channel from those videos wow. publishing companies started reaching out to me exposure continued to build then that is the key hmm and a year later the biggest opportunity that i've gotten to this day um, slid into my inbox and that is the hate you give on set you already know I was invited to let's come not talk about onto it the again set of the hate you give um, the movie adaptation of Angie Thomas's book it is to this day the biggest opportunity I have been given and the most Aww. life changing I'm really happy for her I though ever had um, I got to meet so many of my idols. I got to meet Amanda Stenberg, who I was a fan of her since she was ruined the Hunger Games. Um, we actually had a conversation. It was crazy. I was actually in my dorm room when I got that email. I had to forward that email to my dad and had him read over it and call me back and verify that it was an actual opportunity before I let myself scream and freak out over it. Even two weeks later, when I was on the plane, like I still didn't believe it. When I was in the hotel room waiting to go downstairs and meet the other booktubers who again were huge huge booktubers like booktubers were my numbers didn't even wasn't even this is so interesting this is like a behind the scenes type situation i feel like i'm learning so much this is fascinating a fraction of their numbers i called my dad in the hotel room because i was freaking out and my dad i i think they made a mistake I, I was so sure i was gonna go downstairs and the lady that was coordinating it all i was sure she was gonna come up to me and be like oh wow we uh <laughs> we brought the wrong person i got to see the production of a movie and i'm also a film and production major in college so that was another reason why it was such a big opportunity for me because i got to actually go on like it's so interesting because her talking about this hate you give movie set 
brings up a lot of emotions for me. I still stand by, you know, my thoughts in the video that I made about this is booktube racist, you know, my response video. And I am really excited that she was given that opportunity, but at the same time, I find it appalling that more black booktubers weren't given the same opportunity. Just saying. An A-list movie set and see how the process is done. I to interview real actors and talk about a book that I was passionate about. And looking back, I definitely agree with a lot of people who have said they should have invited more black booktubers. Absolutely. Thank you, girl. And then lastly, Thank you. earlier this year in March, the same amazing people invited me back to the North Texas Teen Book Festival to speak on a panel. Not only that, but the festival had grown so much that they actually decided to do a film festival as well where they premiered wow she has really been able to get some amazing opportunities because like that one initial opportunity that opened up the door to lead her to the next that opened up the door to lead her to the next and obviously she has an amazing personality she seems very kind very sweet so she has to do the work too of showing up and you know showing putting her best foot forward you know talking about her channel connecting with people networking so i'm definitely not taking away from the, the hard work that she's put in but i do definitely think that the hugest thing to take from this video is how galling and painful and frustrating it is that more poc booktubers are not given these same opportunities because all you need is a chance and then what you do with that opportunity is up to you but just to extend that invitation and to open that door and to open that 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 possibility up is not even like given to us to most of us it's crazy movies that were adapted from books and they did interviews and it was it was huge because of the hate you give opportunity the people that are running and planning the event they saw the video i did and saw that i was a huge fan of the book and that i got to actually meet some of the cast but sadly i hadn't got to meet angie that day and so they told me that one of the movies they were going to be premiering was the hate you give and that angie was going to be there and they asked if i would like to do an interview with her afterwards a talk wow back. i'm going to put a picture here because oh my god this is my she looks so happy you guys should definitely go check out the video to see this picture. Naya looks so happy sitting across from Angie Thomas and interviewing her. I can't. Your picture of all times because Angie Thomas is one of my biggest heroes. It was like midnight when I was doing this interview and I, and I feel so bad because I know she was probably exhausted from doing a full day of conventions and then having to watch her movie again and then having to sit through like a 30 minute interview with me but still she was so kind and she answered all my questions. That was another big opportunity where I got to meet so many authors and so many other booktubers. People see some of the work I've done with other authors and so they reach out to me because they're like hey we, we you know we see that you know how to interview authors would you like to come and interview this author would you like to come and do this it's impossible to grow it's impossible again definitely not taking away from the work that Naya has done because not everyone is going to have that same acumen and skill and innate ability to interview authors talk to them of course something you can work on get better at but not everyone is going to have that gift and that talent and that's amazing that she's going to continue to get these opportunities but again <laughs> it all started with someone actually giving her the initial opportunity and then she put in the hard work and that led to these other opportunities just want to make that clear again possible to climb the ladder if you're not even given steps within that ladder if you're not given the opportunity to go into rooms to go into spaces where you can where people can see you, where you mm -hmm. can get exposure. I know mm -hmm. that was a really long-winded explanation and backstory, but I felt like it was necessary to further solidify the point of opportunity being the biggest thing that has an effect on whether or not booktubers, specifically booktubers of color, black booktubers, mm. whether their channels grow. So my hope is- That is the realest thing she said in this video is with this video i know i have a lot of people that work in publishing that follow me that work specifically in book marketing that follow me my hope is that they see this video and that they know how much of an impact that giving opportunities to black creators can have on this community black people read we yes. read 
we are here. Yes, I think I heard a fact earlier today that black people and black women in particular read more than everyone else. And that is a documented thing, but I, I heard that fact earlier today and I was just like, wow. Wow. Because we are not represented like we read the most. <laughs> There are black authors, there are black booktubers, there are black creators. We consume We are here. Books. Sadly, yes. there are still people that are working in marketing, that are putting together events, that are, that are in charge of distributing opportunities. Even though it's 2019, they believe that a white face will sell more than a black face, even though there are just as many if not more black female readers out yes, there. I personally know more. that I can do so much better at giving exposure to other black booktubers and black creators in the future I will not even in the future right now <laughs> um I will be doing shout outs for booktubers of color black booktubers oh. I'm going to pin a comment down below and any black booktubers any aspiring book bloggers, um, bookstagrammers of color. If you have a channel, if you're going to start a channel, start it and then link it down below. Link your favorite video, your favorite photo, your favorite review. Link it down below so that I can find you and I can follow you and I can shout you out on my platform and hopefully just give you as much exposure as... That is the key. We need to support one another and I definitely want to do a better job of that here on my channel. I know I don't have a platform near anywhere as huge as Naya's and I find it so commendable that she is going to start to, you know, lend out a hand and use her voice and use her platform to expose, you know, her audience to other booktubers of color, specifically black booktubers. I think that is amazing and I'm so glad that she's going to be doing that. But I want to do that as well and that is something that I feel that I could do more of are, you know, shout outs and just making sure that the booktubers of color that I do watch that maybe don't have the level of exposure that they deserve are, you know, being exposed to you guys and that I am kind of shouting them out. So that's definitely something that I want to change. I can give you and also to everyone working in publishing that will hopefully see this video um, they will have a giant list down in the description that they can scroll through to find the black creators to make sure to include them in opportunities in the future there's no excuses there have been no multiple threats on Twitter um, now on here I'm not sure if Angie Thomas read the HuffPost article but the other day right after it came out she followed me and and she wow. also started her own thread, which she is did. huge because there little known fact, Angie Thomas actually retweeted my channel after someone like recommended it to her. Now I'm not on Twitter and actually the um my friends, the girls from my book club had to let me know about that. But I thought that was so great and I actually got some subscribers from that. So thanks Angie Thomas. Much appreciated. There are so many big names that work in publishing that follow her that'll see this thread. But she started a thread for um, people of color and for black book to, uh, black content creators to link all of their information and their channels so that she can find them and help support them as well. So I will include Angie's thread yes. in the description box if you want to add your information to that as well. As always, thank you guys so much for your love and your continued support. I will never be able to repay you for all the love and kindness I'm that you've done my again. these past um, five years. Until next time, keep reading, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye! Oh, that was such an amazing video. I had my doubts, but she really was honest. She shared her personal experience, and she also shared, you know, her past and her her opportunities and really just compounded the fact of the, the matter that opportunity is the key. And if we POC creators are not given the opportunity to get the exposure, then we're never going to grow and we're never going to have the same experience as our white counterparts on this platform and in this community. So Naya, shout out to you if you're watching this. Thank you so much for finally, you know, taking Christina Marie's advice and, and you know, really stepping forward and telling your story and being brave and, 
you have no idea how many people you have impacted how many other poc and especially black you know people watching who now will start channels because of your video and you have no idea you know how many prob probably like you know publishing houses and their marketing staff that you know have seen your video that are now starting to rethink things and you just never know the impact that you're gonna have right and i really commend you for doing this video it was really great really timely and now i feel like i need to go read the HuffPost article which i probably will but that is it for this video if you have stuck it out this long ha, kudos to you because i'm not gonna really edit it too too much Ooh, i keep burping hashtag relatable <laughs> but anyways um i'm not gonna edit this too much i've i've kind of been going for a more minimal editing style recently and i'm enjoying that because you guys know i hate editing so um less editing more chances for me to upload more often i know you guys love it but yeah so i say all that to say that <laughs> kudos to those of you who've made it this far all the way to the end i will not drag it out any further i will try another mukbang but you guys i don't know how these people eat all this food but anyways i will catch you guys in my next video thanks so much for sticking around love you much Mwah! bye guys pick names because i don't want to put that negativity out there and I don't want to promote that because I'm a firm believer that when someone shows you who they are you need to believe them that doesn't mean that you need to you know go after them and drag them and destroy their whole lives and destroy their career and all that like that's where I draw the line which is why I'm not a fan of cancel culture I also believe that